Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Philip Chang, and I'm the urologist at RMA New Jersey and Peak Men's Health. And today I'll be discussing a little bit about male infertility. So 50% of couples have a male factor component to infertility. 20% of couples have solely male factor issue, um, and 30% include uh, both male and female issues. Um, some of these um, um, fertility issues could be due to um, lo having low sperm counts or poor sperm motility, um, hormonal imbalances such as low testosterone leading to issues with fertility, uh, azospermia is when there's no sperm in the semen, um, varicoceles are very common, they are dilated veins in the scrotum that can cause issues with the sperm, um, anti-sperm antibodies, and there are lots of lifestyle factors that can affect fertility, such as stress, uh, weight, um, exposure to substances such as alcohol, uh, tobacco, and cannabis. The comprehensive male evaluation includes a thorough medical, surgical, urologic, and reproductive history. So that's just getting some background information, um, two semen analyses, if not done previously, and a thorough physical exam. And this includes assessing for secondary sex characteristics and evaluating um, the genitalia, the penis, the urethral opening, the testicles, epididymis, uh, which is a little structure that stores sperm, um, and the spermatic cords, which are um, structures that contain all of the different um, uh, veins, artery, the vas deferens, which carries sperm, all the different structures that lead to the testicles. The semen analysis is a really important tool that we use. Uh, so a semen sample is typically produced through masturbation, and the lab will analyze it for a bunch of different parameters. Um, semen analysis primarily focuses on a few main parameters, and I'm gonna review those with you all. Uh, one of them is the volume. So just how much semen is there? We generally like to see at least 1.5 milliliters of semen, uh, but something that's important to keep in mind, the semen volume does not necessarily correlate with how much sperm is there. If there were no sperm in the sample or millions and millions of sperm in the sample, it's not something that you would ever know as a patient. Um, and that's because sperm is microscopic. Uh, sperm concentration is really important parameter. Uh, we evaluate it in the millions. So generally we like to see at least 16 million sperm per milliliter of semen. Motility is important. So not only do you need a lot of sperm to get pregnant, you generally need a lot of moving sperm. Uh, we like to see at least 42% of the sperm are moving. Progressive motility is also important. So not just moving in place necessarily, but moving forward. And we wanna see at least 32% of the sperm is moving forwards. Um, morphology is another parameter we focus on, and that's how much sperm is normal shape and size. Um, and so we like to see at least 4%. We use very strict criteria here at RMA. It is not common to ever see this number in the double digit percentages. Um, but we definitely want to see hopefully at least 4% normal sperm. Um, leukocyte count um, is another parameter that's looking at how many white blood cells are in the semen. Sometimes um, samples have a lot of white blood cells, and that could be um, a sign of infection or inflammation that can affect uh, the sperm in different ways. Um, and arguably the most important number is the total mobile count. That's the total number of moving sperm in the entire sample. And we calculate that using the volume of semen, the concentration and the percentage motility. And the higher this number, the better. This is a really important number when um, determining whether some, a couple is a candidate for trying naturally or IUI, intrauterine insemination. Both of those methods require a lot of moving sperm. And so I generally like to see at least 20 million moving sperm. The higher this number, the better. 
on the right side of the screen, you can see just some images depicting kind of the three main parameters, the concentration, the, the morphology, and the motility. I always do an endocrine evaluation. So this is just some blood work looking at a hormone panel for patients. I like to evaluate the total and free testosterone levels. Um, FSH and LH are really important hormones. Those are called gonadotropins. They stand for follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. These are the two hormones that are produced in the brain that tell your testicles what to do. FSH controls sperm production and LH controls testosterone production. And generally these are gonna go up really high if the testicles aren't functioning well. So if someone has an issue with sperm production, FSH typically will go up. Um, if someone has an issue with testosterone production, LH will typically go up. I check sex hormone binding globulin and albumin. These are two different proteins that circulate in the bloodstream. This is important because these proteins bind to testosterone. And so it's really the unbound or free testosterone. And we can also calculate something called bioavailable testosterone that are kind of active in the body. And so that's how we check those. Estradiol, this is basically looking at someone's estrogen levels. Um, all men make uh, or should make testosterone and estrogen, um, and we want the a certain ratio. We want high levels of testosterone and lower levels of estradiol. Prolactin is a hormone that's produced in the brain as well. Sometimes if this is really high, it can be a sign of a growth in the brain called a prolactinoma. If it's really high, it can also lead to other symptoms um, and can sometimes affect fertility. And TSA is a thyroid stimulating hormone. Along with the physical exam, I also do imaging for most of my patients, and that is a scrotal ultrasound. And we do our own ultrasounds here at RMA, so in real time, I can evaluate for certain things rather than just looking at images that someone else captured. Uh, some indications include a difficult exam, physical exam, or suspected pathology on exam. We look for several different things you can see in this image. So I evaluate um, for the vas deferens. And the vas deferens, to be honest, is better evaluated just with the physical exam, but sometimes the ultrasound can pick it up. And this is that tube that um, carries sperm from the testicles to the semen. Um, so the venous plexus is really important. This is looking for varicoceles. Varicoceles are dilated veins in the scrotum. And a lot of my patients have dilate, have these varicoceles. And when these veins are dilated, they can basically heat up the testicles. It increases the temperature of the testicles and that can affect sperm production or sperm quality. So this is one of the most important findings that I look out for on the ultrasound. Um, arterial supply is helpful to see, are the testicles being perfused? Is there good blood supply to the testicles? Um, and that's really important. And then the testicular anatomy, how large are the testicles? Are there any masses, tumors, anything concerning for cancer within the testicles? Is there microlithiasis, which are little calcifications that I see sometimes in the testicles? Some men who have sperm production issues will have tons of calcifications in the testicles. And sometimes these calcifications can uh, signal a risk factor for a malignancy in the future. Sometimes I'll do genetic screening. This isn't for everyone, but there are certain genetic abnormalities that can affect sperm production or transport. So the three most common genetic factors are CFTR mutations. So someone who has these CFTR mutations, which are mutations that can lead to cystic fibrosis, Someone has two mutations that can lead to absence of the vas deferens. Uh, so some people are just born without those tubes that carry sperm. And so they could have really good production, plenty of sperm, but the sperm has no way to make it into the semen. Um, sometimes I check for chromosomal abnormalities. So uh, some men can have a chromosome issue that can lead to fertility issues. One of the more common ones is 47XXY, also known as Klinefelter syndrome. This is a genetic condition that leads to um, just impaired testicle function. So low testosterone and 
low or in most cases, absent sperm production. Um, and the last one is Y chromosome microdeletions. This is to detect a deletion of a really important gene on the Y chromosome um, that is necessary for good and healthy sperm production. There are three types of these deletions. Only one of the types um, is sperm production feasible. The other two, we really don't see any sperm. There are lots of different treatments for male infertility. It really depends on what the cause is, but these treatment uh, plans are really tailored to my patients um, and couples. Um, during a fertility assessment, both the male and female partners will be evaluated, um, and a treatment plan can be created that, um, for both partners that makes sense for them. Um, treatment can include medications to treat sexual dysfunction. Sometimes I see patients who are infertile solely because they're having issues with um, getting erections that are adequate for intercourse or ejaculating. You know, you can have um, really high sperm uh, production, but if the sperm is not making it to the egg, um, then you know, natural conception is not going to happen. Um, I'll treat infections, urinary tract infections, or uh, infections of the testicles, or uh, prostate gland, or any of the areas that are important for fertility. Um, surgery sometimes is, is an option if someone has a, an obstruction, if they're born without those vas deferens, or if they've undergone a vasectomy in the past, um, then I can do sperm extraction procedures to get sperm from the testicles and use that sperm for IVF. Um, I also do vasectomy reversals to allow patients to try to conceive naturally. Those varicoceles that I mentioned, uh, you know, one of the most common causes of fertility issues in men, sometimes I will fix those varicoceles, those dilated veins, to try to improve parameters. Um, um, so those are some of the main surgeries that I do. Some of my patients have a production issue where there's no sperm in the semen, and I can do a sperm retrieval procedure called a microtessy, and that's a surgery to look for sperm in the testicles themselves. About 50% of those patients will have sperm that we can find in the testicles and use that sperm for IVF. Some of my patients are good candidates for medications if they have a hormonal issue, can sometimes optimize those hormones with medication, and sometimes that can improve fertility or improve patient symptoms, make them feel better, give them better energy, libido, help with their erections, things like that. Um, and we have our two main forms of assisted reproduction. That's IUI, intrauterine insemination, and IVF, in vitro fertilization. Um, and so we do these treatments for our couples all the time here at RMA. Um, and these treatment options allow a lot of our couples to um, have the kids that, they, um, that they've always wanted, um, um, that they weren't able to achieve through natural conception. Thank you very much.